So today we're headed to Berenice. It's a little further north than a lot of our properties, but a lot of good restaurants and bars. It's just a really great family area. It's a quiet one-way street, potential single-family renovation. We're gonna be the first ones to walk through the property. At first glance on paper, it looks like a good deal. There's a ton of opportunity when you look at a house like this, and you just have to look at the houses surrounding it. So this is the one that needs the love. It's the only one, actually, that needs the love. So why would we not? What? This is a funky street. Yeah, it's a short little one-way street. Driving here, everything's kind of like that cottage style. Everybody's doing it. You just have the same look everywhere. This one's the only one that isn't. But I don't see anything I love on the exterior. We really have to quickly get a handle on what the construction cost will actually be. At least it's different. <laughs> I mean, this is like, woo, very 70s. I mean, it is 70s throwback. Draperies and fabric, wall coverings. This is awful. I don't think any of these walls, interior-wise, will stay. This is old school layout, but this is a real opportunity for us to do an even like cooler opening. We got good ceiling height. Great ceiling height. Powder room, old school, like plastic tiles. This hardware is sick. You can't find stuff like this anymore. Okay, well, nothing stays here. Okay, question for you. Do you think you go out with this sucker? I checked the footprint online, and we can do an addition if we want to. I would absolutely try to get us like another 10 feet. Sure. Addition on this, opening this up, this becomes the main level. Go outside. Oh, I hate wind chimes. You know what? This is my least favorite thing ever. Holy moly, look at that garage. That's coming down, obviously. Then this whole thing gets removed and then we go all the way back. It's so crazy, isn't it? So like, like from here in, it does look very like murdery. Doesn't it? It's just like, it's almost like a movie set. All right, let's look upstairs. These stairs aren't to code either, no. so. Oh, it goes up another level too, huh? There's an attic up there. Same layout. Tiny little room, not sure what it is. How many bedrooms ideally we want four, right? Three. That's it. Well, that's pretty typical. Pretty and pink and brown. And the bathrooms are probably not gonna lay out right here. No. Pantry. Weird long closet. closet. Ooh, another very cool stove. These are really old, man. Adding a basement in Bernice is gonna cost a ton of money but I feel like when you go to sell it, that's where you make up. It adds a lot of value. I mean, we typically have a bedroom down there, wet bar, family room. I mean, it, it can add anywhere from 800 to 1,500 square feet to a house. Listen, three bedrooms upstairs, possibly three bathrooms upstairs. If we could add another bedroom down here and do like a real basement that's finished, what are we looking at? Well, I'm hoping we land at around 460, 465. That's so cheap. Well, that's why I wanted to come here quickly. Okay. I think with the basement and all the other work, even if we called it six, we're all in at just under one one. And then we sell for over one three. So we have a minimum of a $200,000 profit, hopefully more. So we ended up spending a little more and bought Bernice for 487,500. And now we're ready to turn the ugliest house on the street into the real standout. I already know the facade's coming down and I'm gonna replace it with a modern outdoor look and add an overhang for a really grand entrance. Faux turf and evergreen plants put the curb appeal over the top. And curb appeal in this neighborhood is just like any other neighborhood. Very important. Coming inside, the living room gives that bay window a real presence. And just past that is the dining room and the powder room that's gonna feature a vessel sink and a reclaimed vanity that is perfect for the space. Then you walk into this gorgeous kitchen. Big, huge island, great lighting, and over-the-top range. I'm also adding a chunky mantle to create a real living space. And across from that, Ari's gonna beef up the storage with a retrofitted cabinet and open shelving, which is right next to a stunning marble fireplace. It's patinaed, it is weathered, and it is gorgeous in its detail. Then you've got the cozy family room that leads down into the basement. And then we're doing an addition on the back. I can get a big family room, wet bar, an office, a bedroom, a full bathroom, and a second laundry room. But I wanted the sophistication on the inside. On the top floor, we're gonna have 
have three bedrooms and two bathrooms at the back of the house, a master suite and ensuite with a huge marble shower and tub area enclosed in glass. And you fill your tub from the ceiling and a walk-in closet with a repurposed center island for storage. It's a soaking wet, soaking wet. I'm here at Bernice. Right now, we have an existing here that's pretty much, uh, um, how old is this, like 80, 90 years? that uh, all the walls are not uh, straight. They are already in a bad shape. Well, we can't take this entire house down. I've framed homes these sizes two by four before. So we have to figure out how to brace them and reuse two by fours. If the walls are open now, I, I want to meet you there on Monday. Uh, that's not a problem. All right, sounds good. Okay, let me uh, call Ellison now. Hey. I'm here at Bernice and after I open the walls, uh, I find out that uh, walls are in a bad shape, and also we will have to replace the joists on the first and second floor. I, I really just need to get down to money. What would you have to add to the budget? That's all I need to know. What I think has to be done, it's going to cost us additional around twenty to 25000 It's not good news. I just have to be a little smarter with the floor plan. Then I'd have to save money on the addition. You know, the whole thing has to be torn down. The whole thing, this, that. The worst thing you could imagine is what he's going to come up with. Demo is probably a good two or three weeks here. Just I don't want to rush it. Structurally, I'm not totally sure about it. There's definitely some unknowns. I mean, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. There was a stop work order that was issued on Bernice. Securing it up. Yep. It was not safe to leave the walls how they were because they were so old and after the plaster and wood let it's removed, the walls are not safe anymore. A couple of weeks later, we got stuff for quarter. That obviously is the last thing I want to see. Now, yes. here we are. We're at a, a total standstill. I have to be way more involved. I'm working with the architect. I am revising the permit set. So with the city, I'm doing that. And now we just have to make it right. This may have not been the lane that I wanted to be in, but I'm in it now and I'm staying in it. And I'm the one that's gonna be responsible. I just want this orange sticker off. Yep. I feel like we're gonna go faster, but we're gonna do it safer and smarter. And I don't wanna see any of these signs ever again. Me neither. We needed to go then get the full blueprints and amend the permits. This stop work notice has halted everything. Something seems wrong and it's concerning me now. We have got to get this figured out because I can't afford to just have this project sitting. So I was traveling for work and I actually found out through the media that Donovan's license for his GC company and his development company was suspended. That's a massive, massive problem. Bernice has been sitting for months with no one working on it. Honestly, Donovan and I are just in a really bad place right now. The worst part is that I don't know what I need to do to help solve these issues. So now I am doing anything that I can to remove Donovan from Bernice legally, like to remove him completely from the project. Because these issues with the city, it's just they're getting worse and worse and worse because of him. Bernice had a stop work order on it for a long time. And the minute that we got the permit is really just the minute we started going. That's a green light for me to prove how great I can be with my team. Framing is just beginning. Seeing this thing framed and taking shape, knowing that it's being framed correctly, I'm very excited to see this go in. I just want to make sure everything is being done right. It has to be perfect. So today, I'm looking for a really specific piece. Hey, Eric. Yes? Question. I'm looking for a piece in a master closet, and I've got space to do like a center island, but something that like where you can put like your jewelry or accessories or like a belt or. How about a small pet? Will you a gerbil drawer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of cool. Sunglasses. Okay. Jewels. Let's keep going. More jewels. More jewels. More jewels. More jewels. More jewels. Watches. That's a lot of jewels. I have a lot of jewels. Now, what about That's that one? That's cool. What if you do like hats, belts? Severed limb. Oh my God. 
What is this thing? It was used to hold money and uh, I believe valuable papers. I think this is the piece. Then I can always paint it another beautiful color. So you have 600. Hmm. How about 400? Come on, go half. For you? Yeah. Because it's your day? Yeah. Okay. Halfsies. So after all of these massive delays, Herman's guys are just committed to getting the house done and they're framing the addition even with all the snow. Yeah, for the past uh, eight months, uh, we had been delayed here, and now we are kind of catching up on everything. So even though we're back in business on Bernice, we still have a ton of issues because I have no more money and there's no more time. We've lost time, now we gotta make time up however we can on this project because it's all you can do. So we're insulating right now. We're getting the inspection after that which means we go right into drywall. And drywall means that after all the delays that we've had on this one, we're finally almost there. It's a nut bag day. When it's like uh, from the electricians to the shutter guy to my landscaper Carlos to Ermin and his guys and me and my team, it's just a lot. And I know it's like, why do you do it that way? It's like, why not? If you could knock everything out in one day and all these trades have to be there anyway, then you might as well get it done. Coming to you live. You're being pulled in so many different directions. And if you don't keep your head on straight, you're going to lose it. Maybe you're going to lose your mind. Maybe you're going to lose time. Maybe you're going to lose money. You got to breathe through it. And sometimes you got to hide in the closet and scream. <laughs> So today I am revealing my Bernice house to Vince, my realtor. So I'm really excited for him to see it. I really need to hear what he thinks about the house. What do you love? Is there something else I should do? Did you look at the comps? And ultimately, what can I sell this for? Because I really want to start thinking about that price, dreaming about that price, and getting in on the MLS. Hello. Ooh. Wow. So Vince arrives. Isn't this this crazy? looks incredible. Vince sold this property to me. I'm giving it back to him. And I just, I can't wait to hear what the actual price is. This looks really nice. Isn't this cool? Oh. I like this. I like you come in, yep. you see the kitchen right away. Yeah. And I like being able to define the space without actually closing it up. So it's like, yep. you have this opening, but it's still kind of a cased type yeah, opening. Yeah, sure, it's just a different room than that. And then you've just got these like little corners that are saying, this is your front living room and then it separates it from the dining room, but still open. Yeah, I'm dying to see that kitchen. Lead you, come here. <laughs> oh, wow. Kitchens are really evolving right now, so that truly feels like part of the living space. Like, look at this island. I always go, you know, with the manufactured stone providers. They want something that's sustainable, they want something that's going to be durable. And then this was the beam from the house, so that beam oh spanned the entire yes. width. That's that so out. cool, yeah, it's a good story. I'll have to remember to tell people that. Right, and it's like a mantle for your range. So you got your powder room here. The small side table looks killer in the powder room. It really is the roomiest powder room I've seen in Chicago. Nice size, yeah. And then what I love too is like, everybody wants their family room right in the kitchen. Yeah. You're watching TV, you're hanging out. Great room for a sectional. This came from Round Top, Texas, too. I guarantee it's over 100 years old. Yeah, very cozy. I love this piece. And now, look at this yard. Oh, yeah, this is nice. You can do dining, you can do lounging. People want this to be just low maintenance and look great all year long. Master suite in the front of the house makes it feel way more private. It's enough space. People don't need oversized rooms with their beds in them. They want the big closet and the big bathroom. And that's exactly what I think we did in this space, because this closet is beautiful. Oh, yeah. This is nice. Ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a spiritual experience. This is something else. It's like a spa in here. The floors, herringbone, porcelain, they look like wood. Water closet here, so totally private. Double vanities and this massive, massive shower slash tub area. Two shower heads. 